If you haven't already heard, Apple has given their iPod Touch a minor update for the first time in four years. Its processor was updated from the A8, which first appeared in the iPhone 6, to the A10, giving it the same performance as the iPhone 7. Also, Apple added an option for 256GB of storage, which means this 7th gen iPod Touch has the highest capacity of any iPod ever, including the Classic, which offered 160GB of storage at its peak. Now, that may not sound like a very newsworthy update, but what most people were surprised by aren't the improvements made to the iPod, but that the iPod Touch was updated at all, since rumors surrounding its discontinuation have been circulating for years. So why exactly is Apple still selling iPods in 2019? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and if you want to help decide which topics I cover, make sure you're subscribed, and these voting polls will show up in your mobile activity feed. Now, the iPod has played a very significant role in Apple's history. It was introduced in 2001 and completely changed the way people thought about music players. They went from cheap plastic devices that were frustrating to use and only held 20 or 30 songs to beautifully designed devices that were delightful to use and held thousands of songs. The iPod began experiencing incredible sales success with the iPod Mini, which came in colors and sold for $250. Apple then replaced the iPod Mini with the Nano and 2005, which became even more affordable at just $150. Now, for those people in their 20s, you may remember how popular iPods were in middle and high school. It seemed like everyone had one, despite the fact that very few people owned Macs or were even very familiar with Apple as a brand. But because of the iPod's success, something called the halo effect caused more and more people to become interested in other products Apple had to offer. This helped drive sales of the MacBook and iMac and paved the way for the iPhone's success in 2007. Now, I say all that to demonstrate just how crucial of a product the iPod was to Apple's overall success as a company. And when a product has that much historical significance, companies typically have a hard time moving on to something else to replace it. It's why Kodak filed for bankruptcy in 2012 when they couldn't shift from traditional film to digital photography. Apple has always recognized the importance of replacing or cannibalizing your own products with new ones, because if you don't do it, someone else will. And that's exactly what they did to the iPod. When Apple released the iPhone in 2007, they weren't shy about telling customers that the iPhone had a built-in iPod, which signaled to customers that they shouldn't be buying an iPod if they plan on getting an iPhone. And although that may sound like a bad business strategy to some executives, Apple knew they could convince customers to buy the iPhone if it had a high perceived value. And by marketing it as the best phone ever built plus the best iPod ever made, customers were happy to hand over the $500 that Apple demanded. Now, ever since the iPhone has been around, iPod sales have been on the decline, which is exactly what Apple expected. So it didn't come as much of a surprise when the iPod Classic was discontinued in 2014 and the iPod Nano and Shuffle were discontinued in 2017. But what some people found odd was the lingering presence of the iPod Touch. And because it hadn't received an update in four years, many expected it to be discontinued. But now we know that isn't the case, with Apple deciding to give it a small upgrade in preparation of iOS 13. So what's special about the iPod Touch that's preventing it from being discontinued? After all, there are several valid reasons you could give as to why the iPod Touch should no longer exist. One of the most popular being that virtually everyone has a smartphone these days. In fact, according to the Pew Research Center, 77% of Americans owned a smartphone as of 2017. And that number is part of the reason why so many products like MP3 players and even point-and-shoot digital cameras have been made obsolete. With a smartphone, you can listen to all the music you want through Apple Music or Spotify, and you don't have to spend the extra time downloading songs and transferring them to your device. So it's easy to see why buying an MP3 player like the iPod would just be redundant and unnecessary for most people today. It's also worth noting that iPods are making Apple less money than ever before. They actually used to have their own category on Apple's revenue reports, but now the iPod has been delegated to the wearables, home, and accessories category, which contains products like the Apple TV and HomePod. Now, that category has been generating a large chunk of revenue for Apple in recent years, thanks to the success of the Apple Watch and AirPods, but no one really knows how well the iPod Touch is selling since Apple never mentions it in their reports. So we can only assume its popularity is dwindling. 
Lastly, something I've read a lot on forums discussing the iPod Touch is how outdated its technology is. Its form factor hasn't been updated since 2012, it's using the same display as the iPhone 5, and its processor, despite the update, is still going on three years old. So why would Apple, a company that prides itself on being at the forefront of technological innovation, want to keep an aging product like the iPod Touch around? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly why. But first, I want to point out a unique quality of the iPod Touch that I think is being overlooked. And that is, it's one of the only products to have not been touched by Apple's price hikes. The iPod Touch starts at $200, which is the same price point as it was in 2012. If iPhones were priced similarly, the iPhone XS would start at $650 today instead of $1,000. And this is important to understand, since it proves Apple is intentionally trying to keep the iPod Touch as affordable as possible. Now let's get into all the reasons why Apple is continuing to sell the iPod Touch in 2019. And something you may be asking yourself is, why the iPod Touch? Why wouldn't Apple also continue to sell the other iPod models like the Nano and the Classic? And the answer has everything to do with iOS. The Nano, Classic, and Shuffle all ran their own custom operating systems designed specifically for them. And while this was okay for users, it wasn't the best business strategy for Apple. Because when your most popular and profitable product, the iPhone, is running iOS, you want everyone to become familiar with that operating system so they're more likely to buy an iPhone in the future. And by discontinuing the iPod Shuffle, Nano, and Classic, Apple has forced anyone shopping for an iPod to buy the Touch, drawing them into the iOS ecosystem and therefore increasing the likelihood of them choosing iPhone when shopping for a smartphone later on. And this type of long-term business approach is very characteristic of Apple. They've always been much more concerned with the lifetime value of a customer instead of the value of a single transaction. That's why employees in Apple's retail stores don't try to upsell you and don't make a commission. Their purpose is to find the best product for your circumstance so you'll be happy with your purchase and come back to Apple in a few years when you want a new smartphone or notebook. So the iPod Touch is Apple's most affordable iOS device and the only iPod that ever ran iOS, which makes it ideal for many unique customers like, for example, children. Most young kids use an intermediate device like an iPad or iPod before they're old enough to have a smartphone. And if you know anything about marketing, it's that children are the best customers. They beg their parents for an item they want and are typically loyal to familiar brands into their teenage years and even adulthood. So if Apple can get an iOS device into the hands of young kids as early as possible, it'll likely pay off big time in the long run, since they'll likely choose iPhone as their first smartphone and perhaps even a MacBook or Apple Watch as they become entrenched in Apple's ecosystem. So you can see why Apple isn't concerned about the iPod Touch making them a lot of money today. They're more focused on attracting long-term customers that are introduced to the brand through an affordable and accessible device like the iPod. But it isn't only children who are ideal iPod Touch customers. It's also a great device for international markets like China and India, where iPhones may be considered too expensive. Another reason to keep the iPod Touch around is its use in commercial settings. I've actually been to restaurants where wait staff would use an iPod Touch to enter orders instead of writing it down on a notepad. And I'm sure there are countless examples of iPods being used in similar business situations. But perhaps the most popular way the iPod Touch is being used today is as a dedicated music player. Because despite the vast majority of people owning a smartphone, there are those who prefer having a device for the sole purpose of listening to music. In fact, when the iPod Classic was discontinued in 2014, its resale price on eBay skyrocketed to $1,000 at its peak, demonstrating just how much demand there still was for high-capacity iPods. And although it may not make much sense to younger people who are used to streaming music, many people own a music collection that they've accumulated throughout their life before music streaming was even around. And putting their entire collection on an iPhone probably wouldn't leave much storage space left over for things like apps and photos. So then buying a dedicated music player like the iPod Touch becomes a more reasonable option. Not to mention it saves your iPhone some battery life and allows you to keep your music collection exactly where you want it. For example, if you always listen to music in your car, just keep your iPod connected and your music is ready to go right when you need it. And if you only listen at work, then you can keep your iPod at your desk and never worry about messing around with your iPhone. And we can't overlook the fact that the iPod Touch still has a headphone jack, which is a huge convenience when connecting to your favorite headphones or speakers. 
So clearly, there are good reasons for Apple to keep the iPod Touch around for the time being, although its future remains uncertain. Will the iPod Touch ever be redesigned, or will Apple only update its processor every few years to keep it compatible with the latest version of iOS? No one can say for sure. Now if you want to give your iPhone a fresh new look, check out Skinit.com. They have a huge selection of product skins to choose from. I've actually been using the Aqua Blue Chameleon skin for my iPhone X, and love how the color actually changes shades depending on the light source and angle. They also have skins for AirPods, iPads, Galaxy phones, and even game consoles. And when it comes to designs, Skinit is officially licensed by brands like Disney, Marvel, the NFL, NBA, and more. So check out Skinit.com to find your favorite skin and use code GREG25 to get 25% off your order. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.